All right, folks, we're doing something a little bit different this time. Uh, probably going to be raw dog in this video because it is on the cheapest crapper Samsung S04A or A04S. Doesn't even do 60 FPS, doesn't do 4K, doesn't do HDMI out, so I can't even see what you're seeing. But I want to give this a crack. My other phone's busted. I'll record it with this and we'll see how it goes. This is a Ubiquiti LAP120, a light AP120. I quite like these, use a lot of them. This one was at a customer site and they called up and said everything stopped working. We jumped on their switch that this was connected to, was at like 97 degrees. Um, we rebooted it, this didn't come back online, the switch didn't cool down, so something was up with this. What we promptly found out is when we got it back to the office and we stuck it into a PO injector like this one, you'll see PO injector, or nearly see, it's got a nice white light there until we put this in and then it triggers the overcurrent protection and it cuts out and some inje some injectors it just keeps trying again and again long story short it's a bit broken so pull it on busted open and have a look at what they're made of and it's not too hard to fix now first of all i think this is really interesting uh, you can see down here i'm hoping you see down here there is a athros it looks like an athros controller that looks like some memory um, LAN port, you know, standard sort of components you'd expect to see. And this is the radio bit. And as far as I can tell, these are the two main points where it contacts back to the PCB you'll see on the other side. And then all these strange cuts must be um, to limit what frequencies can get there. So I'd say this bottom part is probably going to be um, 5 gigahertz. And then this is going to be 2.4 gigahertz. I'm just guessing. I don't know enough about this. Um, but you can see like all of these different segments are all cut differently and this kind of reflector which is a bit spaced is positioned differently too. So I'm no radio engineer or RF engineer but I find this really interesting. Here we go, you can see on the back as well there's another Aetheros chip and there's the Ubiquiti ASIC there. Uh, along with down there that looks like a uh, SPI chip, some flash memory. Then we have this bad boy and um, this is what I think is faulty because it's the only thing that's actually discolored. I don't know if you can see or if it's going to autofocus. But um, from what I understand, this is some sort of regulator. Let's have a look. Network filter transformer. So it makes sense that that's faulty on this. I jumped on AliExpress and grabbed two replacements for like 10 cents each. So. I figure it should just be a matter, theoretically, to get this working again, if nothing else is dead. And to me, it all looks pretty happy. I couldn't find any busted circuitry. Um, this does require a heatsink, which I've peeled off and we'll put back on. But I think maybe just replacing this would do it. So we've got these two here. Very, very similar. These are 2230R. This says 2042R. I don't know if that makes a difference, but really don't have much to lose at this point. It's really hard to find the data sheets for these as well, um, but these were the ones that were available. So I'm going to sit down, get a soldering iron out, desolder this one, solder a new one on, and we'll see if it works. Here I've just got um, some bismuth solder paste, which is meant to well, it's got a lure lock, which is meant to make it easier to remove the solder, as uh, it should stay wet for longer. Ooh, that comes out quick. See if we can clean these up slightly. I hope I didn't hit any of the smaller components. Oh, they're looking pretty good. And so are these. I'll just... My hat's probably in the way of you there. Sorry about that, but it's better than the grey here. And we can see this thing is utterly cooked. 
um, those little coils in there are so fried. So we'll write in that assumption. It has uh, made a little mess on the board there, so I'm just going to grab some IPA and give that a wipe. Alright, that is nice and clean now, so we should be right to stick another one on. As I said, I don't know if these are the same spec, but I would assume they're very close to the same because I couldn't find the exact one. Uh, this is as close as it got. So, I would assume that these things aren't all too sensitive to electrostatic and whatnot, um, given that... Let's clean up that last little thick bit there. Uh, given that these are specifically for power management and whatnot. And all I'm going to do with this is put it in the right spot. You can see dot on the board, two dot on the chip. I'm going to hold it there and just touch on each pin to wet it and solder it. If I can get it to line up. Alright, so now those are all touched up and that is in place. Let's just have a nice quick look and all of those solder pads are successfully connected. My phone appears to still be recording, which is excellent. I'm hoping that focuses for you, but I honestly can't tell. So I guess what we do now is plug in the PO injector again and see what happens. It might explode. Um, and because of that, I'm going to put some impact resistant glasses on. Well, the PoE injector is still on. And it's got a blue light. So, oh, it's sure. Oh, yeah. It's booting. It's actually doing its thing. Uh, we'll know in a short minute. If it's booted and operating successfully because we'll get a management radio all right so now because the management radio is likely disabled in the firmware i'm just going to factory reset this one do this just by holding that reset button for 10 seconds and the lights should start flashing you can reboot it and reset it this way i believe so Best to always hold it for that bit longer. There is also a reset button, reset hole on these, which is good to be aware of. Uh, I believe it's only for the 24 volt passive PoE models though. So definitely very good to be aware of. Um, you also don't want to plug these into anything that doesn't support 24 volts because as I said, it's passive, it's not actively detecting. So it is just pumping 24 volts down that line and it may cook something if it's not designed for it. And that's kind of what these little doodars uh, regulate it seems, looking at where what goes where on the circuitry. Handy thing is though, you can just tap into that and pull 24 volts. I've got a 24 volt to USB 5 volt adapter plugged into my switch over there. So I've turned on 24 volt PoE on one of the ports and I'm using that to power a USB device, which I've got to say, it works bloody well. There we go, folks. It did appear eventually. I just didn't leave it plugged in long enough. I have also uh, plugged it into the switch. And as you can see there, it's got a LAN IP and I can access it locally, even if I access it like this over the management radio. It looks very happy and healthy. So I don't see any issues here. This is a good way to fix a $200 access point, which can do 450 megabit plus, I think from memory, with a 10 cent piece from AliExpress, replacing this cooked unit quite literally. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope that taught you something. It certainly saved me some money and was interesting. Till next time, take it easy, have fun, and look after yourselves.